This is a Panasonic 1250-watt microwave oven with the Genius sensor. It's having a problem with whenever you open the door, the turntable started running. The actual microwave itself wasn't, but the motor kept turning the turntable. So I took it apart, found out the main switch is bad. So I need to change it. Be sure this is out of the wall outlet before you even start working on this thing. There's some hazardous things inside of it. And it coming on risks your health and safety. Little screws in the side of it. And five tamper proof screws across the back of it. Takes a tamper proof socket, it's a Torx bit with a hole drilled in the end of it. To get the switch assembly out, remove this felt screw and this one. And slide the it's about a six inch long piece out of there. The main switch is what's bad. See it burn up. It's one on top, and then there's two secondary switches on the bottom. Earlier I had to reinforce this support member with this piece of metal because whenever you shut the door it wasn't latching all the way. I put this Z-shaped piece of metal in it to brace it. The switch just unsnaps out of there by the two hooks. Just burn up. The replacement switch ends in 3C25. Since these connectors are burnt up, I'm going to have to cut the wires and put new ends on it. That's the main switch. I'm going to go ahead and cut this little zip tie. Be sure not to cut any of the other wires to get some more room to maneuver in here. Since my connectors are burnt up, I scavenged a connector off of like a refrigerator door light switch. There's some kind of industry standard connector for these micro switches. It's really about two thirds the size of the smallest like 14 gauge connector. And it just the 14 gauge connector just falls on those micro switches, but some kind of small appliance plug in. I went ahead and cut the two white wires off of the one side. I'm going to splice it to one side of this connector. You can use different ways to connect it. Um, this is the last way I'd recommend. This is second to the last, this is third, and the best way to solder. This is Rosin Core Electrical Wire Solder. Use it if you're going to solder it. And a soldering gun. Some flux. Just a cap and crimp down on the wires. That's not too bad. But the temperature changes in this, so something like this has the potential to come undone. And really, if you use a butt connector, you should double insulate it with some heat shrink tubing. Cut it off and slide it on the wire before you put it together, and then slide this over the butt connector to 
seal it. To start off, I've cut the wires far enough down the connector where there's no dark look to them. And slide a piece of heat shrink tubing down the wires before they get hooked up. Hopefully far enough back where the tensure doesn't cause it to close up. Take some flux, put the wire ends in the flux, apply it to however you want. Kind of open the strands up a little bit. Run them together and prop it up a little bit. Heat the soldering iron up. Make sure they're all got solder fluid around them. Looks good. Slide the heat shrink tubing over it. Double this shrink tubing up if you wanted to to add protection to it. Just run the soldering iron around it to shrink it up. Cut the other one and do the same thing to it. The donor plug in wire is quite a bit heavier than the original and it can handle both of these wires, so I won't be needing this one. I'll just slip a piece of heat shrink tubing over it and seal it off and cover it up with a piece of fabric based electrical tape it's one done okay all the connections are made I used the double one on this gray one because the wires was pretty short and they're heat shrink tubed and backed up with fabric black tape now where the switch mount is melted I'm causing a hump and I'm going to take a razor blade and make sure that's flat again so the switch can set on those dowel pins sticking up flat it's activated by this lever And from these hooks on the door handle, kind of flatten that out reasonable. There's one dowel pin on the end that just has to drop into at an angle. Red button goes up. Drop it in between the two fingers. Underneath, lift up on this latch back here. Push it underneath of it. And bottom it out. Until it's in line with this dowel pin. And then push it down on the dowel pin. Make sure these two fingers lock. <laughs> then when this activates it, when this lever is lifted up on. The door hits the top of it and pushes it down. Okay, the white wire went on the bottom and the gray one went on the top.
Okay, they went on there good. I suppose you could patch some clear silicone between the two of them if you wanted to, but they're locked onto the wires good with those appliance ends. Now to feed this, open the door up and feed this whole switch assembly back in to put the screws back in this support member here to Phillips head with uh, locking washers under it. Just feed that bottom ear along it with the top one. Okay, just slide this whole switch assembly back until the screw holes are lined up. Make sure the door is open. This, this latch actually lifts up on that and then when the door closes it resets it. So it's unreasonable. Put the screws. Had these locking washers underneath the heads of them. Back into it. The only thing I gotta say about tightening the screws is support the switch assembly while you're putting pressure on them so you don't bend this support bracket. Like I say, over time from slamming this door, it bends that bracket and that'll cause a problem early on. And I put this brace in there to stabilize it so it won't cave in, doesn't interfere with anything. Although the rivet does kind of interfere with getting the switch in and out a little bit. I just made a little notch in it so it'll slide past it. Okay, now to secure the wires and make sure they're not rubbing against any metal surfaces and put a zip tie back on all of them. Verify the switch is functional, but you can see how this panel bows when you go to shut the door. The red button is what I'm watching. Just like downtown. That's what's topping the microwave from work. Good enough. Check and make sure all the wiring's routed inside of the plastic connectors and not hanging off like these. These could fall out of there and rub against a metal cabinet, I guess. I might cut the excess zip tie off. Just line some of the wires so they're not pushing around or pull, getting pulled out. Shutting that door does just call a shake an action. Looks good enough, I guess. Some of the things I'd say about being in here is not to jerk on anything too suddenly and not to have the plug-in plugged into the outlet while you're in here and as long as you don't jerk on these little skinny wires and break any of them you'll be alright and stay away from the workings back here Make sure these screws are pretty tight or the switch will work loose and cause you problems shutting the door. But I think that's it. Put the cover back on it. Give it a little trying out. Now to test it out. Put a bowl of water inside the microwave. Always put something in there for the energy to go to. It's not good on the microwave to run it without something inside for it to heat up for the microwaves to land on
looks good. Now before when I opened the door, the turntable kept turning. Back in business. Might put a drop of uh, petroleum jelly on these hooks offhand, vegetable oil or something, just to drop on them to help from wearing through these ears in there. Done deal.